Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and I upload a whole bunch of different types of videos on this channel, mainly surrounding true crime and psychological cases, as well as a little bit of fashion and lifestyle sprinkled in where I can. Now today I'm back with this crazy lipstick. I feel like whenever I wear lipsticks like this, they either completely divide people, like people either love them or they really don't. For today's case, I'm going to be discussing the strange disappearance of the Westerfield brothers. But before we get started with the case, I'm just going to run through my usual disclaimer just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases that I cover over on my channel. I'm simply relaying the information I'm able to find myself through research on the internet and because only certain sources are accessible to me it means I may get things wrong, mispronounce things or leave things out and I apologise if I do any of those things. I'm really not trying to do anyone any harm or an injustice, I'm simply working with the information that I have available to me. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get started discussing the disappearance of the Westerfield brothers. The disappearance of the Westerfield brothers takes place in the year of 1964 in a place called Fayetteville in North Carolina in the United States. At the time of their disappearance, Terry Lee Westerfield was just nine years old and his little brother Alan John Westerfield was just seven years old. The two young boys were living full time with their mother, her name was Margie Westerfield Bock, after their parents were divorced. Margie had in recent months separated from a man named Sergeant Carl Bock, hence her double-barrelled surname, who had been her third husband. Sergeant Carl Bock worked as a military police officer in the local area and himself lived on the Fort Bragg military base. The exact reason as to why these two decided to separate at this point isn't known. On September the 12th, 1964, Margie had been preparing to head out for her morning shift at work and she was waiting for the babysitter to arrive who would be looking after the boys for the rest of the day. This babysitter's name was Barbara Temple and she was left in charge of the care of the two young boys while Margie was out at work. This had appeared to be a typical day up until around midday when Sergeant Carl Bock arrived at the home completely unannounced. He invited himself in and Barbara was relatively familiar with him since he had been married to Margie and he had been the boy's stepfather for a little while. But what was strange about this encounter was that he had immediately attempted to instruct her to go home and leave the boys in his care. She had initially protested considering Margie had hired her for the day and she wanted to obey what she wanted to do, so her instructions as she obviously chosen to leave the boys in the care of Barbara as opposed to her estranged husband. But despite protesting as much as she could, Barbara was ultimately dismissed of her day's work around half an hour after he had arrived at the home. The next known occurrence had been when a friend of Terry, the eldest son, had knocked on the door and asked Bock if Terry could come out and play with him. Bock had refused to let this young boy speak to Terry or even see him, and he told him that he was keeping him inside as a punishment. What exactly Terry was being punished for isn't known, but it does now seem very, very strange considering the fact that Bock wasn't expected at the home that day and he hadn't exactly been in the house long by that point. Margie arrived from Margie arrived home from her work shift at around 5.30pm that day and she found herself immediately taken aback that the boy's stepfather was sat in her living room but there were no sign of the boys. It was at that point that Bock told her that earlier on in the day the boys had wanted to go to the Fayetteville Broadway Theatre to watch a double feature showing of No Name on the Bullet and The Atomic Man. This had allegedly been at around 4pm and so this was Bock's reasoning as to why the pair weren't home yet. And as I'm sure you can imagine, Margie was furious at him. She, and as I'm sure you can imagine, Margie was immediately furious at Bock, considering that he just turned up at her home unannounced while she was at work. He'd taken it upon himself to dismiss the babysitter that she'd hired for the day, and he'd taken her sons out to the cinema and left them there alone while she was completely unaware it was all happening. The pair argued for a little while before Maggie abruptly left the house to spend the next few hours at the nearby NCO club, which from my research I could find was a place for non-commissioned officers to relax and socialise, since Bock had told her that the boys would be out for another few hours yet and that he kind of had it covered. And Margie had headed back to her home at around 1am the following morning after she'd you know, cooled down and left Bock to deal with whatever mess he'd gotten himself into, but what she didn't expect to find was Bock alone in her home. 
home. She had immediately asked him where her sons were and the pair began to argue. Bok had told her that at around 7.45pm the evening before, he had headed back out to the cinema where he dropped the boys off to pick the pair up and he waited there for two hours but there were no sign of them. And so he decided to head back home since he had assumed that they'd either gone to a friend's house or they'd gotten a lift home from a friend or they'd even began to walk home by themselves. But Margie did not accept this nonchalant explanation for her missing sons and she had immediately ran the police to report the two boys as missing. So the official report was made on September the 13th. Investigators were very quick to jump on this case since the boys were so young and they hadn't been seen for a number of hours and no one had any indication of where they could have gone or who they could have been with. They had immediately caught on to the sense that there was something not quite right about Bok's story and it didn't quite add up and this was then supported even further when they began to question the employees who'd been working at the cinema that evening. Many of the employees at the cinema had known Alan and Terry personally since they were always at the cinema. They were avid cinema goers. They loved seeing all these movies and so a lot of them either knew them by name or they recognised their faces. And after questioning a number of members of staff who had been working in the cinema on September the 12th, there was a consensus that none of them had seen the boys in the cinema and they were sure that they hadn't been at the double feature showing. And in regards as to whether Bok had waited at the cinema for two hours when he went to collect them, as he claimed he had, none of the employees recalled speaking to him and so nothing conclusive could have suggested that he was there, or at least he just didn't really make himself known if he had been there. And as I'm sure you can imagine, Bok was immediately a likely suspect in the disappearance of the two young boys. It is worth noting that the biological father of the two boys, his name was Mel Westerfield, he was examined as well as having some potential involvement. He was very, very quickly cleared of any suspicion and it was ruled out immediately, like they were adamant that he couldn't have had anything to do with the disappearance and he became a very active member in the search for the two young boys in the years after they disappeared. Sadly, the boys' biological father committed suicide in the year of 1978 after many years of searching for his sons. And Bok remained the likely suspect throughout the majority of the investigation and he was allegedly noted as being particularly uncooperative and unhelpful throughout the entire process. Apparently, he never really made any effort to speak warmly or fondly of his stepsons at any point when he was being questioned and he remained very emotionless while he was speaking about them. The investigation into the disappearance of Terry and Alan Westerfield provided no answers for many years. Margie decided to officially divorce her estranged husband and likely suspect in the years following. And this case has been reviewed and revisited a number of times in more recent years. Bok has been taken in for further questionings on multiple occasions, but he remained uncooperative and he just kind of became increasingly frustrated with the investigators the more he was called back. Sergeant Carl Bock died in the year of 2016 without there ever being any conclusive answers regarding whether he had some direct involvement in the pair's disappearance or not, and sadly their mother died years before in 2003 with both of her boys still missing. I couldn't find any specific theories online as it just seems to be that the majority of them all stem around different scenarios that led to Bock being uh, the likely suspect and Bok having some direct involvement, so some of them go along the lines of him being violent and injuring them and hurting them, while others suggest that he could have abandoned them somewhere. So there are so many uh, stems of this theory, but they all just seem to kind of go along that line that point towards Bok being guilty. I genuinely hope that one day this case finds some answers and that there can be some justice for Terry and Alan Westerfield. And sadly that is everything I have to discuss today, so let me know your thoughts down below. Um, I mean there's a, not really a lot of discussion that really could be had, because it just seems to be that all of the case discussion kind of just points towards this one person, but I don't know, you might have some other theory. Just let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting, and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.